Hi, I'm Sarah Baya, and welcome to my science class. Good day! We have another fun and interesting lesson ahead. In today's lesson, we will be identifying changes in materials that are useful and harmful to one's environment. At the end of our lesson, you are expected to identify and describe the beneficial and harmful effects of these changes in materials to the environment and suggest ways of preventing and minimizing the harmful effects of the changes of materials to the environment. So if you're ready, let's get started! Last week, we have learned that materials can be mixed with other materials. For example, we can mix solid materials together, forming a mixture. We could also mix solids with liquids and liquids with other liquids. So let's review our past lesson with a simple activity by guessing if both materials will form a mixture. Congratulations if you answered them all correctly! I hope by now you know that materials in our environment can change. So let's start by playing a game about changes in materials. We will play Guess the Picture. Try to guess the picture hidden under the tiles. The tiles will peel off one at a time, and as soon as you think you know what it is, take a guess! If you're ready, let's get started! Look at the illustration. What are they doing? What materials are being changed? We can see that the tree is being cut, the wood is burned for cooking, and garbage is thrown into the river. Now, which of these changes are useful and which changes are harmful to the environment? Useful or beneficial means having a value or benefit with good effect while harmful means causing damage or injury which likely to cause harm. In today's lesson, you will learn to identify changes in materials that are useful or harmful to one's environment. Again, as a safety reminder, be careful in doing the activity. Always ask permission and do the activity in the presence of an adult. So get your paper and ball pens ready and watch our first activity. Do you have pieces of cardboard, cloth, paper, empty cans, bottles, plastics at home? Instead of throwing them away, we can make use of these materials into something useful. Watch the following videos. simple but stylish pencil holder using a tin can. These are great for pencils, markers, crayons, and more. Let's talk about supplies. We'll need decorative paper, a marker, a set of eyeballs, a clean tin can with the label removed, a glue stick, and some tape. I've already cut my decorative paper to fit the can. First, I'm going to attach the paper to the can using a piece of tape. Next, I'll wrap the paper around the can and secure it using my glue stick. Now I'll use the glue stick to attach the eyeballs. The 
Here we go. Let's finish it up and draw a cute smiley face. Place your markers inside and there you have it. I also like using wrapping paper for simple designs like these. Hello fellow planet protectors. Today we will be using cardboard and scraps of fabric to make unique walls for. Let's get started. For today's project, we need fabric of your choice, a good pair of scissors, a glue stick, and cardboard. Use the scissors to cut out letters that we've already outlined on the cardboard. Once all the letters are cut out, it's time to attach the fabric. We'll start with this one. Place it down on the fabric like this. Now let's cut the fabric to the shape of the letter. Make sure that you leave enough space to fold the fabric over the cardboard. Use your glue stick and place a generous amount on the back side of your letter. Fold the fabric over, pulling it nice and tight. Push down on the fabric to make sure it sticks. Repeat this step until all of your letters are covered in fabric. To hang your letters, just apply a piece of sticky tape to the back and put them on the wall like this. Check out more recycling videos at mydisposal.com slash kids. Thanks for watching! In the video, we have seen that materials undergo useful changes. Cardboard and pieces of cloth can be made into decorative pieces while empty cans, bottles, and plastics can be reused to make pencil holders. By changing the materials, you are able to use them in a way that brings good effect or beneficial on the environment. In our first activity, we saw the good or beneficial effects of changes in materials. But there are many changes in materials that are bad or can cause harm to our environment. Let's watch the video from epa.ie. Backyard burning is the uncontrolled burning of waste. It is often carried out in backyards and in gardens. But did you know that the term backyard burning also covers the burning of waste in open fires and stoves? But what is really happening when you burn your waste this way? The types of waste can include paper, cardboard, textiles, timbers, food, garden clippings, plastics and household chemicals. Waste burned in this way is burned at temperatures of about 200 to 400 degrees Celsius. This can result in the release of highly toxic pollutants into your home and also into the outside environment. These pollutants include particulate matter, PMs, dioxins and nitrogen oxides. These are bad for everyone's health. Children and other people with heart problems or other respiratory diseases are really sensitive to these pollutants. Illegal burning waste material contributes to over 50% of all dioxin emissions in Ireland. We all need to reduce the amount of waste we generate and make sure we dispose of the waste we do generate properly. As well as being bad for the environment and our health, burning waste at home is illegal. Contact your local authority for more information about safe and proper waste disposal options for your household. Remember, you should never burn household rubbish. It's bad for you and bad for the environment. If your neighbour or someone else you see is illegally burning waste, please report the incident to your local authority on the National Environmental Complaints Line. Low call 1850. Burning waste is not only a nuisance to neighbors, it can release many harmful chemicals into the air you breathe. Many people may think that they are doing the right thing in reducing the amount of waste going to landfill and saving money, but they are both causing long term environmental pollution and interfering with the lives of others living in their area. Burning waste in your home or garden can damage your health, as well as that of your children and your neighbors. 
Such illegal practices lead to release of toxic materials which are real hazard for people's health and the environment. How much trash do you think you make in one day? You might be surprised to find out that the average Filipino throws away 0.7 kilograms of trash every day. Multiply that to the population of our country, that is 43,000 tons of garbage every day. Just imagine! All of these things put together end up in our garbage cans and then in landfills which are huge dumping areas where garbage is buried. If this keeps up, the earth will soon be covered in trash. So how can we make less garbage? Here are some simple ways that we can do. If you have a broken chair or table at home, do not dispose. Consider the ways in which it could be repurposed or repaired. There are many exciting ways household items can be repurposed or repaired. Repairing items is another way to reduce the consumption of materials and natural resources. By placing value in the items you have and repairing when you need it, you are sustaining the products you own and reducing wastes. Reuse means to use again. Plastic is reusable and can be used over and over again. Keep paper that is good on one side and use it for notes, list, and homework practice. Toss waste paper, plastic containers, and metal cans into the recycling bin. It's easy and it means new products can be made from recycled materials. So instead of having to chop down trees, dig new mines, and pump more oil out of the ground, it is the best way that we recycle. To rot is also known as composting. It is the act of turning food waste and other organics back into nutrient-rich soil. Put banana peels, apple cores, and other kitchen scraps in your family's composter. Composting at home reduces the amount of waste that has to be trucked to the landfill. It is also fun to pick into the bin every so often and see the cool critters at work breaking down the waste materials into compost. Trees contribute to their environment by providing oxygen, improving air quality, climbing, conserving water, preserving oil, and supporting wildlife. During the process of photosynthesis, trees take in carbon dioxide and produce the oxygen we breathe. If we want to save our planet for the future and improve our present day of life, plant trees. It's a must. Participate in cleanup drive or conduct your own. Tell your family, friends, and teachers what you're doing. The more people who are involved, the bigger difference we can make. It's challenge time once again. I'm going to show you pictures of before and after and try to guess if the change in material is useful or harmful to the environment. If you're ready, let's begin!
if you got all correct answers, good job! In this lesson, you learned that materials when changed can be useful or harmful to our environment. And by doing things like recycling, reusing, repairing, composting, planting trees, and participating in cleanup drives, we are able to reduce the harmful effects of changes in materials. So that's it for our lesson today. Don't forget to read more about our lesson in your textbook and module and answer the activities in your worksheets. I'm your teacher, Sir Abaya. Thanks for listening and goodbye class. That's all for today. See you next time.